Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Magicka Necromancer build. This is a maximum Magicka Necromancer. It has 56k Magicka and 11.5k spell penetration. Absolutely amazing sustain, healing power, tank ability, damage, and mobility. This build is pretty freaking strong. I'm not going to lie. My impressions of this build early on is that... It is better than Stamina Necromancer. Now, I didn't play more than just the Stam Necromancer build that I uploaded for you guys two days ago. So, you know, there is that. But, man, Magicka Necromancer feels really, really strong. And uh, I think we're going to see a few changes to it before it hits the live server. But anyway, this is a Fire Staff Restoration Staff Necromancer build. It has got an insane amount of burst, like I said. And, uh, yeah, it's really great at all-around combat, I think. It has very good mobility. The new Sigic skill allows us to have pretty much 100% uptime on Snare Immunity and uh, Immobilize Immunity. And, man, look at this burst. Just so much damage. So, I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at that build. So, to begin, I am a Breton on this spec. I think that Breton is one of the best choices for sure. We are, of course, a full Magicka build, so Breton is going to get a 7% flat cost reduction to everything. It gets some regen, and, of course, it gets the max Magicka. High Elf is also going to be a good option. Dark Elf can work, too. Um, Argonian will also work, too. You can seriously go with uh, whatever race you really want, but I think Breton, uniquely, is probably the best bet for this build uh, and it's simply because of that cost reduction and the max magicka that it gets now let's take a look at the max stats on this build and i'm going to buff up with the pet we have got just shy of 56k magicka we've got just about 26k hp and 15k stamina on this build absolutely insane max stats for the necromancer 56k magicka we're gonna hit nice and hard a lot of hp that goes great with our shield and of course the max stam is gonna be uh fantastic for a magicka build simply because we need that stam pool for blocking roll dodging etc now when we take a look at the regen side of things we're just gonna resummon the pet and use our potion Look at these regen stats, 2k Magicka recovery and 1400 stamina recovery. We have got awesome sustain on this build, absolutely awesome sustain on this build. And of course, we are running a restoration staff if we need to return more Magicka like that as well. Now, taking a look at our spell damage and spell crit, we actually have super low spell damage on this build, and there's definitely a reason for that, and it's because the Necromancer does not get the major sorcery buff. So when I put this build together, my idea behind it was, can we just make a build that omits the major sorcery buff? We use the max mag for our damage shield, and we use penetration to make up for the lack of spell damage, so we still hit really hard. And man, it works so well. If we had the major sorcery buff, we would have an additional two to 300 spell damage on this build but we would have to give up a slot uh, either in our potion or in our skill slot in order to get that buff otherwise when we use the back bar infused enchant here we go up to around 18 to 1900 spell damage on this build and that is it now we don't need super high spell damage like i said we're definitely just playing that max magicka route and it works well for the necromancer our spell crit is coming in at 42.8 percent and we have two uh grave lord skills on our front bar which means that when our opponent is below 25 percent hp we have almost 63 percent crit chance against them i think this is really great because we don't have an execute on the necromancer but the increased crit chance as their health drops kind of works as an execute because we guarantee kind of higher damage on them because we'll crit more often now taking a look at our physical and spell resistance on this build we'll buff up with the armor we have got just almost 21k spell resist and 18.5k physical resist with 3k crit resist on this build a massive amount of critical resistance on this spec which is super great we are running seven out of seven impens so this is as much crit as you can get running the seven out of seven and not going for impen sets and i chose to put so much impen on this build because we have awesome stamina recovery normally if i was playing a light armor build like this i'd wear a couple well fitted for the sprinting and the dodge rolling but we have such a huge stam pool and such great stam recovery we can go full impen for that bulk on the necromancer now, for the Mundus that we're running, we of course have the Mage Mundus to increase our max stam. This is the best bet for offense and defense and healing on this build. 
as uh, we don't have that major sorcery buff like I've mentioned. And then we are also a vampire on this build. Now, you don't need to be a vampire. I just happen to still have vampirism on my necro. My regens are a little bit higher because I'm a vampire, but uh, you don't need it and you don't not need it. It's up to you if you want to have it or not. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't really matter. You should be just fine with or without it. And then for the food that we're using, we have the increase all primary stats. And I went with this food because we have such awesome sustain on the Necromancer. Seriously, Necro has such good base sustain that you really don't need to do much else other than uh, have a little bit of regen in your gear somewhere, and you can just run food that omits the regen altogether. This food is fantastic for the max health, the max mag, and the stamina, all very important for a light armor magicka build. We're gonna need that bigger stam pool, especially if we're gonna play solo on this build, so I think that works really well for this spec. And then, of course, the potion that I'm using on this build is the uh, Tri Restoration Potion. Now I have the Crown Potions here, but you can always make these on your own, and they're actually a little bit better than the Crown Pots, but they do the same thing where they restore all resources and give us access to all of our recovery buffs, which is super fantastic. So it just means that we have insane sustain on this build. Seriously, the sustain on this build is really awesome to pair with the amount of damage we have. It's a very, very solid build. Now taking a look at the sets we're using, to put this bad boy together. We, of course, have Slimecraw on, and Slimecraw was picked yet again for that minor Berserk buff. We get a little bit of spell crit as well, but that 8% damage increase is so valuable. Necromancer does not get the minor Berserk buff outside of using a Restoration Staff for it, and I didn't want to use that skill because I didn't want this build to be super buff heavy at all. So I think Slimecraw is the best option here for that reason. Now taking a look at our next set, we have got the new set that they have, the Crafty Alphix Robe. Now this is very similar to the Necropotent set, however it does not require a pet at all. It just gives you a flat amount of Maximum Magicka. 1k, 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 2.5k, massive amount of Magicka coming from this set. And it pairs really well with, of course, the Necropotent set. Max Mag, Max Mag, Max Mag, and 3,100 Maximum Magicka. Fantastic Max Mag stacking on this build, and that is how we're able to push almost 56k Magicka on this spec by running these two sets in conjunction with the food and, of course, our attributes into Magicka. Now, taking a look at the enchantments on this build, on the back bar, the Restoration Staff, we have got an Infused Staff with the Weapon Spell Damage Enchant. That's going to push us up to that 1800 Spell Damage on this spec. And uh, on the front bar, we have got a Sharpened Necropotent Staff with the Shock Damage Enchant. And I actually went with Sharpened here because the Nern Honed would have been good for damage and healing. However, we're not running that damage buff. So I felt it would be best to go with Sharpened because it would just give us the most amount of damage by quite a bit, actually, because we don't have the major sorcery. So really, really great for the burst build we're going for. And of course, our shields are based off our Maximum Magicka. So we don't need to stack the, uh, the spell damage yet again for that reason. Now, the Shock Enchant I picked because it can apply, of course, Minor Vulnerability vulnerability which will reduce the which will increase the amount of damage your enemy takes by eight percent very very valuable uh just for a burst build in general now taking a look at the jewelry they are full arcane of course for that max mag and then i've got two magicka recovery glyphs and a stamina recovery glyph uh i think that this is probably the best way to go i have really high stam sustain on this build we could definitely take the stam recovery glyph off if we wanted but because i want to use this in solo pvp i think having the extra stam recovery is well worthwhile because you will have your stam bar stressed a lot more if you play solo than if you're just doing group combat or a one-on-one -on -one. so i i went for the stam recovery glyph for that reason if you guys want to just mostly duel or do group combat you can definitely just put a magicka recovery glyph here instead and have a little bit more mag sustain to work with that being said the sustain on both departments of this build is really fantastic you shouldn't have resource troubles at all and then for the gear guys we have got full impenetrable for that critical resistance and full maximum magicka like i said i went full impen because we have such good stam sustain we could definitely afford the defensive properties of impen here over going for some well fitted and the max mag yet again just to stack that magicka on this build as high as we possibly can now, taking a look at the skills we're running on this build, we are starting off on our Destruction Staff bar, and this is your primary burst slash damage dealing bar, and uh, I'm going to buff up too, and we actually use the pet to buff up because we are running the Necropotence. So we got Force Pulse as the first skill here, coming in just shy of a 10k tooltip, really nice tooltip. With the 11.5k total penetration that we have on this build, this will hit 
very hard. So we've got a really strong spike with the Force Pulse here. Now, something I wanted to mention as to why I picked Force Pulse over the Gravelord Ricochet Skull skill. You can use the Ricochet Skull if you want, but Force Pulse is a faster projectile and it cancels really well, whereas the Ricochet Skull is a little bit slower and it does not cancel as well. So that's why I went with the Force Pulse, even though these things share pretty much the same tooltip when they're fully buffed up. I think the Ricochet is just a little bit stronger. Uh, so it's up to you what you want to use here. I chose the Force Pulse because of the speed. You can cancel it. It's really worthwhile for finishing off an opponent. Now, the next skill that we have is Flame Reach, and Flame Reach is going to be your primary stun for the build. It, of course, adds a nice dot as well, but the big reason that we have this skill here is, of course, for that stun, and the knockback is also worth mentioning because it will move your opponent, and it synergizes really well with our Blast Bones and our ultimate because we can kind of control where our opponent is, allowing us to just land a bigger combo or a more distance-based combo, which the Blast Bones will hit harder with. Now, the next skill that we have is Dampen Magic, and this is your primary damage shield for the build. Now, I know that people like to run Harness Magicka, but I think for this build, there, there are no sustain issues. You definitely don't need to run Harness to keep your sustain up at all. And uh, the bigger damage shield is honestly more valuable in PvP, in my opinion. Having a bigger damage shield means that it's harder for your opponent to burst you down when you use that shield. And this build has pretty insane healing power i'm not gonna lie and this damage shield is pretty much only used as a response to uh to a lot of damage so we've got a very very strong damage shield with the dampen magic here now you could go for the harness morph like i said but uh i don't think that it's necessary at all now the next skill that we have guys is this stalking blast bones we're gonna buff up so you can see the damage on the tooltip here a 16k stalking blast bones on this build with all the penetration that we have if you guys saw my previous necromancer build the stamina necromancer this blast bones tooltip is a thousand lower but we have so much more penetration that this is gonna hit harder than the last build that we did so this is gonna do a lot of damage it will summon the skeleton from the ground after 2.5 seconds it'll run at the target and just jump into them and explode and every second the skeleton spends chasing its target it is increased in damage by up to a maximum of 50 percent 10 percent per second so i'm gonna say this about blast bones this is a very good skill but i think this is like i said in my last necromancer build a little bit too strong i think the 50 percent damage bonus is kind of overkill it gives us really massive bursts so we'll see what what uh, zenimax decides to do with this but as it's sitting right now we can easily push over a 20k tooltip damage with 12k pen i don't know man that is so much damage so yeah, Blast Bones is going to be really strong. And something I want to mention about it is that if you knock your opponent back with the Fire Staff knockback, the Blast Bones takes longer to hit them, so you can ensure more damage out of it. So there's some definite synergy there. And of course, the Blast Bones. And of course, the delay mechanic of how the Blast Bones work just allows you to stack it with your other attacks. So you can do a massive amount of combination damage with the Blast Bones on the Necromancer. Now, the next skill that we have is Inner Light. Two big reasons why we have it. The first one is, of course, that 5% maximum Magicka plus 2% for being a Mage's Guild skill. So we get a Max Mag bonus from running this. Necromancer does not get a bonus to their maximum Magicka outside of the Mage's Guild. So this is the only way we can push that Max Mag higher. And then that Major Prophecy for the Spell Crit, also very important for the build to have it on our Burst Bar. Now, taking a look at our ultimate... We have got the Glacial Colossus. I'm going to buff up the tooltip again for you guys so you can see it. But, oh my lord, 12.4k frost damage, three smashes, and then the final smash is going to stun everyone hit for four seconds. Each smash applies major vulnerability, which will increase the damage your opponent takes by 30%. So the way you can kind of look at that is all of our damage is increased by 30%, including this ultimate when we use it, including the Blast Bones. So huge synergy with the Blast Bones into this ultimate. I myself found a lot of success with this ultimate going for the Blast Bones, Fire Staff knockback to knock them into a good spot, and then you place the ultimate on top of them everything explodes they take so much damage and it's all aoe as well what a strong ultimate now this ultimate is fantastic for hitting a group of things too cleaning up a flag from npcs it is so good for that you just mix it in with the blast bones and you get such a powerful smack now of course this ultimate is very expensive 225 alt to use it so it, it does cost a lot but you can also cast it at a distance which is worth mentioning too so you can actually like attack with the blast bones into the ultimate on a distant group 
and see a nice big smack on them as well. All right, so let's take a look at our resto staff bar. This is our uh, healing bar slash our kite and sustain bar. The resto staff, of course, returning so much resource with the heavy attack. And we get that major mending from running the resto, getting the heavy attack in as well. So it gives us a nice bonus to our healing power too. So let's begin by taking a look at the first skill. I actually picked Rapid Regeneration. Now, I picked Rapid Regeneration because it is a fantastic heal over time. We don't need to go for the Mutagen Morph because we have the uh, Hexproof, which will remove negative effects. So Rapid Regen is just going to give us the most amount of healing over that period of time. And uh, it pairs really well with the Intensive Mender, which is the Necromancer Heal skill. And I went with the Intensive Mender Morph because it halves the duration of it, but doubles the healing power. And yeah, look at this tooltip. 7,400 health every two seconds when you use this. This is insane. So if we actually did the math on this, this is over a 30k tooltip on this heal over eight seconds. So it's twice as strong as the rapid regen, over twice as strong as the rapid regen in its healing power, but it pairs really well to have both of these up on this build. If you wanna drop a heal from this build, you could drop the rapid regen, but you guys will see in the footage just how great that skill was and how it paired really well with the mender. So this is actually our only healing powers, these two skills mixed in with the damage shield, but this mender heals you so much. I kid you not, you can fight people with your shields down easily and get enough healing out of this mender to just continue to fight them. It has so much healing power. So in my opinion, I don't think this skill is going to stay as strong before the live server comes out. I think the healing is a well, quite a bit too high, by like 30% too high, to be honest. It's an incredibly powerful heal. So as it sits right now, absolutely fantastic. Even if it takes a pretty hefty nerf, I still think this is going to be the strongest heal over time in the game. So very, very good heal for the Necromancer. And this, of course, counts as our pet, just like the Blast Bones. Um, but this one's more reliable because the Blast Bones will die all the time. So this guy will give you your regen passives and it will give you your Necropotence bonus as well when you use it. Now, the next skill that we have is Race Against Time. This has been reworked in the Elsewhere patch to provide you immunity to snares and immobilize for four seconds and removing all the snare and immobilize on you. And, of course, it gives us that movement speed bonus and the minor force. Uh, so, yeah, really, really good skill for this build. Because we have such a passive amount of healing coming in from the Mender and Rapid, we can just run away, like literally sprint away, and cast Race Against Time as well as the Damage Shield and just weave between them. Maybe go for a Hexproof to remove some negative effects. Holy man, this is such a good skill now, and I really like this change that Zenimax did for it. It adds a lot of much-needed Snare immunity to not only Necromancer, but all the classes in the game that were kind of missing access to this, or just builds in general that were forced to run things like Forward Momentum. So I really like this change. And for this build, it keeps us very, very mobile. It allows us to essentially continue to sprint in whatever direction we want and just allow our shields and heals over time to soak up the damage as we run away. Now, the next skill that we have is Hexproof. And you guys have seen this before if you checked out my previous Necro build. This will remove four negative effects. And while slotted, the cost of all of our abilities are reduced by 3%. So that's kind of nice for our back bar here. But removing the four negative effects is so important. Now, this skill costs health to use. And as you guys can guess, this pairs incredibly well with our heal over time focused build here. Um, because it costs health to use, we can easily just spam this because our heals over time are well over the cost of Hexcrest. So yeah, really fantastic actually for this build in particular. I think that Hexcrest pairs really well with a high HP regen or a high heal over time build. And then finally, the last normal skill we have is the Summoner's Armor. And I went for this morph to reduce the cost of our uh, Blast Bones as well as our Mender by 12% when we have the armor active. Just a little bit resource return. On this build, you could definitely go for the morph that pulls people to you if you want. It would be quite good, to be honest. It'll pull people into your Blast Bones too. So uh, that's kind of trolly. But it's really up to you what you want to use for the morph here. Um, the pull one, in my mind, I don't think will last the way it is to the live server. It's another Necro skill that's a little overtuned so we'll see how it goes but uh, this one is up to you guys for sure and then finally on our back bar i've gone with the ravenous goliath 
And honestly, you can go with whatever alt you want here. I picked the Ravenous Goliath because I'm on the PTS playing Necromancer, and I wanted to just enjoy the Necromancer ultimates and have some fun with them. But I will say this, it is also a really fantastic ultimate. So it's very, very strong. It makes you very bulky. And uh, the thing about the Goliath is if you're fighting a lot of NPCs and you use the Goliath, you'll heal a ton of health off them. So it makes it a very good skill to take down a flag with. But that being said, the Glacial Colossus can literally just wipe a flag in like one cast with the Blast Bones. So it's up to you what alt you want to go for. Um, both of these are really fantastic. You can use them both in conjunction. But something that I think would work really well on this build is also the Sigic Ultimate Undo. Morph to the one that gives you minor protection or uh, even the one that you can use while stunned. I think the minor protection is worth mentioning simply because, well, we're already fairly bulky with our shields, etc. So if we throw our shield up and sprint with Race Against Time on the back bar, we will have a lot of bulk, even more so than you guys will see in the footage here. So really uh, good ultimate for this build too would be to go for this one defensively. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the champion points that we're rocking on this build. So in our first tree here, we've got 34 Warlord and 19 in Sprinter. Um, you want to make sure that you have the Stam to Break Free and the Stam to Sprint. We've got nothing in Bashing Focus because we are playing a Staff build, so we don't need to be bashing a lot. Uh, so yeah. Now taking a look at the Lover Tree, we've got 56 Arcanist, 49 Mooncalf, 11 Healthy, and 4 in Tenacity. Now I have 11 Healthy here. This should actually be in Tenacity if I'm a Vampire, but if you're not a Vampire, you can put a few points in here for a few percent if you want. Uh, the big focus, of course, is Arcanist Mooncalf. We want to have that Mag Sustain, and we want to have that Stam Sustain on the Necro. Really important for PvP. And Tenacity for our Resto Heavy Attacks. The Resto Heavy Attacks are quite good. So like I said, if you're going to be a Vampire on this, you can just take it out of Healthy and put it into Tenacity. Now, taking a look at the Shadow Tree, we've got 40 Shadow Ward and 56 Tumbling. I wanted to put a lot of points in Tumbling because Roll Dodge is very important in PvP. And, of course, Block is very important, too. But on this build, I think we'll be doing a little bit more rolling than blocking. But we obviously need to do both anyway because, of course, it is PvP. I've got a single point in Befoul here because I had some points left over. Like I said, if you're going to make adjustments here, you can probably move this Befoul point out somewhere better, too. Now, taking a look at our blue tree in The Apprentice, we got 50 Spell Erosion, 49 Elemental Expert, and 51 in Elfborn. A beautiful split here for a burst tree, just uh, a nice even focus on penetration, flat damage increase, and critical damage increase. Now, something I want to mention is that this build has 11.5k spell penetration without using an armor debuff on our opponent. So without adding any debuff to them, we've got a massive amount of penetration already. So we can do a lot of damage, a lot of damage. We got nice tooltips and insane penetration. Now, the important passive we get here, of course, is Spell Precision for that bonus to our Spell Critical. Arcane Well is also nice. It will give us a little bit more mag recovery uh, every now and then when we kill an opponent, but this is more of a PvE passive than anything else. Now, taking a look at the Atronach Tree, we've got 81 Master at Arms and 39 in Staff Expert. Big focus on Master at Arms because we are, of course, playing a burst build. All of our attacks count as direct damage, so this will buff up pretty much everything. And then Staff Expert for that increased damage to our destruction staff. The resto staff will do a little bit more damage too, but it's more for that destro staff than anything else. And the important passive that we get here is tactician. We roll dodge to set an opponent off balance. It's really nice to have this passive because you can stun people with a heavy attack or a partial charged heavy attack if you roll one of their attacks. So that's the big advantage I think in PvP of the off balance. And then we've got nothing in the Ritual Tree as we have no stamina skills and uh, we don't have any damage over time. So taking a look at our Steed Tree, we've got 56 Ironclad, 17 in Spell Shield, and 52 in Resistant. Now, I did a, a nice focus here on Ironclad Resistant to, of course, bulk up our Crit Resist. And in, in PvP, Incoming Burst is usually direct damage, so this is a great counter to Incoming Burst. Spell Shield, I put a few points in here, but I didn't put too many because we're a Breton. If you're not a Breton, you definitely want to put a few more points here than I did and even them out with your Light Armor Focus. But in the Lady Tree, I've gone 44 Light Armor, 32 Hardy, and 32 Elemental. And yet again, because we're Breton, I focused on the Physical Resistance because we have that bonus to our spell resist already and then the hardy elemental defender just to bulk up our uh, defense against incoming physical and magical damage nothing in thick skinned because we have hex proof and uh, we have a really strong purge we have really strong heal over time so we can easily spam that purge 
yeah, we really don't need thick skin. We can purge off all those dots. And then in the Lord Tree, we've got a whopping 37 in Bastion. Um, now, I actually think I have a few too many points in Bastion here. You can actually take out a few of these, in my opinion, uh, and just lower your shield just a little bit because we're very close to our shield limit on this build anyway and if we take a few points out of here it allows us to put a few points into quick recovery which will increase the healing done on this build too so keep in mind the tooltips i looked at were reflecting maybe my bunk champion points from earlier but i think this is a little bit better because we don't need a massive amount of extra shield strength our shield of course is getting uh, all these other buffs too so yeah, really, really nice, and the shield is more of the oh shit button than anything else. And the quick recovery is going to be nice for our healing, just to bulk up those tooltips a little bit further as well. And that is the build, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, so let's take a look at a little bit of PvP commentary. Now, I only did duels on this build because, well, there's really nobody on the PTS other than people just to do one-on-ones with. So we're going to start off with a nice little burst. We set down the skeleton. There we see the stun into the skeleton, the force pulse and a massive smack on that sword to bring him down. And uh, now we're actually going to do a very long fight against this Templar, and I wanted to use this fight for the build video because this was a fight that just gets to show you the strengths of this build and uh, how well it can counter a lot of stuff we see in the PvP meta. So right off the bat, you notice that I'm just channeling my healing skills. I'm going for the, uh, the Rapid Regen, and I'm going for the Mender, and I'm using the Hexproof Purge just to remove all of his damage over time here. He goes for the Meteor. We have the CC immunity up. I still block the Meteor, and we counter with our own Blast Bones combo. But this Templar plays really well, so we have a tough time putting the damage we need to into her. And uh, there you see we get a good counter with the Fire Staff stun there, and we're just going to break the Eclipse and just continue to fight this guy. And just look at how much work the Hexproof does in this fight. A lot of the times you see where we have a lot of pressure on us. Here we go. I go for the Fire Staff knock back into the ultimate and the Templar does a great job sidestepping the ultimate going into his block and we're just going to make sure to reset the blast bones on him too. Now a big part of playing the mag necro I think or just necromancer in general is when you're using blast bones to make sure that you're refreshing it as often as you can on your opponent because if you're not actively refreshing it well it does a lot of damage and you want to make sure to apply that pressure at all times and here you can see the Templar is just going offensive on me he goes into his ultimate we're going to hit him with the fire staff knock back and then uh, uh, we're safe here. I'm just going to reset my heals over time and then go for my Sigic Order skill that's going to give me the immunity to the snares and stun. The build that this guy's playing is pumping out a lot of snares, so it's really great for us to have that Sigic Order skill because it makes it a lot easier for us to just kite around the back of his jabs and not allow him to land those big combos. And there you see, we're just continuing to refresh the Blast Bones as we fight this guy. We go for the Hexproof, removing all of the negative effects there, counter with the Fire Staff stun. There's the Blast Bones following him taking its sweet time a massive smack from the blast bones there but the templar just continues to apply pressure with the jabs getting some healing there and uh, we're just going to kite him out using our sigic skill the sigic skill so great for this build it pairs really well with the heal over time here we hit him with the ultimate i try to knock him back into it with the fire staff however he does a good job reading the play there he blocks it and we're just going to be forced onto the back pedal again as he goes jabs on us here he goes for his meteor we block the meteor we hit him with the fire staff staff knockback and I hit him with a few forced uh, pulse pokes to try to put in the pressure there and reset my blast bones on him and go for a resto staff heavy attack here now this build because of the heal over time nature of it you can set all your hots up go for the damage shield and it's very very easy even when you're under pressure to channel resto heavy attacks on people and the major mending it gives means that it's going to be even easier to channel multiple resto heavies as long as you continue to stay on top of them and uh, keep your hots up now we're just going to continue to fight this Templar and you see I'm doing a lot of moving behind him as he jabs and there we see a nice big blast bone smack. I could have gone for the offensive stun there. I should have I think but uh, there we see another blast bones after the fire staff knockback. He takes his time to break that stun and we put a massive smack into him with the blast bones but the Templar does a great job. His power his honor the dead is just going to heal him right back up and he goes into his ultimate. I go for the Sigic skill. He does not have the gap closer so we're able to just kite him out there hit him with the fire staff knockback 
and just continue to poke him here with our Destro Staff, cycling the Blast Bones yet again. We break the Eclipse there, and uh, I go for my counter ultimate as he goes for pressure here, trying to put the damage onto him, but I take a lot of damage too. He does a fantastic job blocking out that ultimate there, and uh, I'm just going to do a resto heavy attack here, and we're just going to continue to fight him. Go for the Hex Crest as often as we can to remove those negative effects. Remove his uh, remove his uh, his Destro Staff weakness uh, to elements as well. Very important that we take that off and the Power of the Light, and there we see he reapplies the weakness to elements. We try to set a combo here, just ignoring his offenses. Get him with a nice knockback there. He blocks the Blast Bones. Fantastic play, and uh, we're just going to continue to rotate on him. Reset the Blast Bones down and make sure that we're cycling our heals over time. Go for the Sigic skill yet again to counter his Bat Swarm, allowing us to just stay mobile and stay out of the big AoE damage that he has there. And we hit him with a great combo into the Blast Bones. Fantastic reaction yet again from the Templar to block the Blast Bones, hit the Honor of the Dead there, and look at the direction change as he starts jabbing through us. We direction change yet again, making it very hard for the Templar to land the jabs here. And we're just going to continue to kite him out. Now, something I really want to note about this fight is that we are very rarely forced to use the damage shield. So I did say in the build video that the damage shield is more of an oh shit button than anything else. Just look at how good the heal over time is. A massive smack with our ultimate there, but the Templar yet again reading the play well into his block, into the heal, doing a great job tanking that ultimate out. And we're just going to continue to fight him. He goes for his Eclipse into his ultimate. We counter with the uh, Hex Crest, removing the negative effects, and we just continue to run circles around him using our speed against him, using our Im immunity to immobilize. And just the fact that the Hots are so strong, it allows us to continue to use the speed and rotate around this guy. And uh, look at that stamina bar. Look at how awesome our stamina bar is. I think that's really well worth noting. And in a duel, you don't really test your stamina bar that much. But for 1vx and solo PvP, the fact that we have such good stam sustain and this guy cannot touch our stamina bar is a big deal. So I go for some more Resto Heavy on this guy just to return a little bit of resource. He catches us with a nice Eclipse there. I think he actually might have got hit by the Guard Eclipse. We take a Nasty Snare. We go into our Sigic skill, break a lot of distance, and he's forced to chase us yet again. He does a good job countering our first knockback there. He goes into his ultimate. We take a lot of damage. I go for my Oh Shit Shield. We go for the heals over time, and look at how fast our health bar shoots up. All we have to do is just keep the damage shield up so he cannot continue to hurt the health bar. And we easily survive there. Now, that big heal was really clutch. And uh, this is where I'm talking about the heal might be a bit too strong because I feel like we should have been punished pretty hard for uh, for dropping that low. But as you can see, we managed to make it away. Just channel an easy rest, though, heavy at a distance there. And we just continue to purge these negative effects away with the Hexproof. And uh, we do two Hexproof in a row, and our health bar does not go down. The heal over time plus Hexproof, I'm telling you guys, this is such a great combo on the Necro. And as you can see, we're just continuously resetting the Blast Bones on him to keep the damage up here. And uh, just hitting him with our Force Pulse in between our knockbacks as well. A huge Blast Bone there. He does a great job responding with his heal. Yet again, he goes into his Eclipse. We go for the uh, the hex proof removing the negative effects there make sure we got our heals over time get a great stun off into the blast bones yet again but the templar very quick on his feet to respond there and uh, a weird sork pet just kind of poked us once and runs away but we're going to continue to fight this guy there's a huge blast bones there as i go for the resto heavy we should have gone for the poke we possibly could have gotten the kill there but we're just going to continue to cycle the blast bones on this guy and he's going to continue to cycle his effects on us as well we go for the heavy attack into uh into the uh uh, hex proof purging off those negative effects and we're just going to continue to get a little bit of resource back from him here i really like how we have the rest of those staff here i think that uh i think that we could you know use our stamina bar and speed to help alleviate if we have any magicka issues but for the sake of this build we aren't doing a super huge amount of heavy attacks and there's the finish with the ultimate a massive smack with the blast bone as well to bring him down so a fantastic fight to elysium a fantastic fight to everybody who dueled on the pts if you guys like this video hit that like button if you guys are new here hit that subscribe button if you guys want to send in your own clips to be featured in a top five or send in a build to be featured on the channel you can send that to christopher eso at hotmail.com and as you can see my friend copus goes for the necromancer gank what a dirty gank Thank you guys so much for watching. We are sponsored by What the Fast. They're a VPN for gamers. If you get crappy ping to your favorite games, they're free to try. So I implore you guys to check them out. 
and uh, have a great night, everyone. I'll see you next time.